Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'id Ayyuhal ikhwa wal akhwat Respected brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek his divine aid, we seek his assistance Whomsoever Allah azza wa jal guides then can misguide And whomsoever Allah azza wa jal misguide then can guide, I bear witness that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah Azza wa Jal alone without any partner. And I testify that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his final Prophet and Messenger. As well proceeded, inshaAllah, we continue our class, Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, Ka'anna Katara. Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal be upon him as if you can see him. And be idhila in this class, we learn about the Prophet Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. Ma'rifatu. Nabina Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam Coming to know and recognizing and familiarizing ourselves with the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam And as we mentioned part of knowing the Prophet sallallahu It means to know his physical description And wa alhamd in our previous class we discussed this What was the physical description like of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam The next chapter inshallah it ties in with the previous chapter and that is seeing the Prophet Muhammad in a dream which is a bishara which is a glad tiding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he gives those people who believe in the Prophet Muhammad and those who emulate his lifestyle and follow his sunnah this is a gift which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the true believer to see the Prophet Muhammad in his dream sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the next chapter bit now we'll be discussing it is ru'ya ar-rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam seeing the messenger of allah alaihi salatu wasallam what does this seeing mean does it mean we will see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his physical form in reality or in a dream this will be clarified with itna so when we speak about seeing the prophet muhammad alaihi salatu wasallam no person can see the messenger of Allah except the one who knows the Prophet. Except the one who knows the Prophet Sallallahu true description. They know his characteristics. They know his physical makeup. And no person can truly say they saw the Prophet Sallallahu in a dream if they do not know the physical description of Rasulullah Sallallahu As you will see many people claim to have seen the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam. however this is just a mere claim when they are requested to describe the person they saw in the dream you will see that the description they give it is not according to the description which we have come to know of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu which has been described to us by his companions through the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. so the first hadith the author brings in this chapter it is the hadith which is reported in Bukhari wherein the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said Man ra'ani fil manam faqad ra'ani fa inna shaytana la yatamathalu bi Rawawi Bukhari The Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam he said Whoever has seen me in his dream faqad ra'ani then indeed he has seen me so what does this mean? It means whoever has seen the Prophet according to the authentic description of the Prophet in terms of his height, in terms of his complexion, in terms of his facial description, in terms of his sifa, which has been reported, then indeed this person has seen me. Because Shaitan cannot take my appearance and this is common people see in their dream perhaps um, one of the forefathers who have passed on comes to them in a dream and tells him to do something which is very gharib, very strange and the people take towards this and they say just because I saw my grandfather telling me this in a dream and they believe it however this can be shaitan coming to you in your dream through the appearance of one of your relatives who have passed on. However, with regard to the Messenger of Allah والسلام, it is haram ala shaitan to take 
the appearance of the Prophet as the Messenger of Allah said فَإِنَّ شَيْطَانَ لَا يَتَمَثَّلُ بِي Shaitan cannot take my appearance However, it might just be that a person comes to you in your dream and he claims to be the Messenger of Allah but we don't know the actual description of the Prophet and we believe it to be the Prophet and so this could be Shaitan However, according to the description which we have come to know of and which we have learned it is haram upon the shaitan to take that form Allah Azza wa Jal has preserved the Prophet um, from the shaitan to take his appearance فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَا يَتَمَثَّلُ بِي the next narration it brings a similar meaning when the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said in the hadith reported in Bukhari and Muslim muttafaqun alayh man ra'ani فَقَدْ رَأَى الْحَقِّ فَإِنَّ شَيْطَانَ لَا يَتَزَيَّى بِي Whoever has seen me, then this person has seen the truth. Meaning, indeed they have seen the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. فَإِنَّ شَيْطَانَ لَا يَتَزَيَّى بِي Because shaitan cannot, يعني, لا يتسور ولا يتشبه. The Prophet, the, the shaitan cannot take the appearance of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And so in other narrations it's mentioned فَإِنَّ شَيْطَانَ لَا يَتَسَوَّرُ بِي And in other narrations it mentions لَا يَتَشَبَّهْ بِي That the shaitan cannot take my appearance. So this is confirmed in the previous hadith as well. And many a hadith uh, conveys this meaning that indeed the shaitan cannot take the um, physical form of the Prophet alayhi Another hadith in this chapter is the hadith which is also reported in Bukhari and Muslim. The hadith when the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, Man ra'ani fil manami fasayrani fil yaqadati. Man ra'ani fil manami fasayrani fil yaqadati. Wa la yatamathalu shaytanu bi. The Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, whoever has seen me in his dream then this person will see me whilst he is awake whoever sees me in a dream then this person will see, see me whilst he is awake so what does this mean? does this mean that when a person sees the Prophet in a dream and then one day he, um, he, he awakens and he is awake You'll see the Prophet in physical form. No, this does not mean that. As some people claim that they saw the Prophet in physical form. Rather, what this means is Fasayarani fil yaqadati. It means the person will see the Prophet on Qiyamah. That this person who saw the Prophet in a dream, bi he will receive the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this does not mean that a person will see the Prophet in physical form, in reality. Right? This we need to clarify. As some people claim this, that they saw the Prophet in physical form. The Prophet he passed on. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ And the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِ الرُّسُلِ And many messengers passed away before him. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he passed on the death which was prescribed for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is our belief as Ahlul Sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ, he passed on. Some people do not like to attribute mot death to the Prophet ﷺ. And they believe that the Prophet ﷺ is hayyu, that he is he's living right now, that he is alive, that he roams this earth, that he moves around freely. And this will be clarified insha'Allah in the next chapter which deals with the death of the Prophet That we believe that the Prophet he passed on and he died the death which was decreed for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we talk about seeing the Prophet we speak about seeing the Prophet his form. The way we have come to learn of his description we see his form. It does not mean that we physically see the Prophet in reality. But rather this relates to dreams 
which we mentioned it is a bishara, it is a glad tiding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as the Prophet gives us the glad tiding in this hadith, Man ra'ani fil manam fasayarani fil yaqadati. Whomsoever has seen me in his dream, he will see me whilst he is in a wakeful state. And we said that this wakeful state, it refers to Qiyamah. When you will be close to the Prophet and you will receive the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the hadith ends off by saying, وَلَا يَتَمَثَّلُ شَيْطَانُ بِي Because shaitan cannot take my appearance. Shaitan cannot take my appearance. So, what do we benefit from these narrations which we have previously mentioned? Firstly, that seeing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu it is possible. But it is possible when we know his description alayhi salatu wasalam. In terms of his hair, we see his hair, and the long it was, it was up until the shoulders. Sometimes it was just below, below the earlobe, then sometimes it reached the nape of his neck. And so this was the description of the hair of the Prophet also. We said his um, appearance and his complexion, he was, we could say, a wheatish color. He wasn't brown, nor was he white, but he had a wheatish color with a dash of redness in it. And so if a person comes and he says, I saw the Prophet also in a dream, and his hair was extremely long and I never saw more beautiful hair than this. His hair reached his lower back. So automatically we will know that this is not the description of Rasulullah Sallallahu Another person will come and he say, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu and his face was illuminated. And we know the Prophet had a bright face. And he was extremely white in complexion. Automatically we will know that this is not the description of the Prophet Sallallahu according to what we have come to learn of him. So it's possible to see the Prophet but according to the description which has been narrated in his Sunnah والسلام, in terms of his length a person can say I never saw anybody which was taller than the Prophet I saw this extremely tall man and he had extremely long hair and he had extremely white complexion automatically we will know this is not the Prophet والسلام, even if this person claimed to be the Prophet in your dream. So this is important that when we see the Prophet it must be according to the description which has been mentioned and reported in his Sunnah The second benefit which we derive from these ahadith is that Al-Manawi he mentioned in his explanation of these ahadith that seeing the Prophet truly seeing the Prophet it must be according to the description which has been authentically reported and it is traced back to the Prophet and if the person sees the Prophet in a form other than that which was described then the person has not seen the Messenger of Allah the third benefit which is also mentioned by Al-Manawi he mentions the person will see me in a wakeful state what does this mean according to the ulama? He says it is a special type of seeing which includes being close to the Prophet Sallallahu on the day of Qiyamah and attaining the Prophet Sallallahu's uh, Shafa'ah, attaining the Prophet Sallallahu's intercession. And so this is what is meant by whosoever sees me in a dream, he will see me in a wakeful state. And so this shows us something very, very important. That perhaps you might read a hadith in the English language. If you take this hadith on face value, it says, Whosoever sees me, then indeed um, he has seen me, and this person will see me in a wakeful state. So if you take this hadith upon the apparent meaning and the English translation, it means that we will see the Prophet whilst we are awake, and we'll see his physical form. However, this is not the correct interpretation of this hadith according to the ulama of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Some of the Sufiya, some of those people who went into extreme practices with regards to spirituality, they make many claims with regards to seeing the Prophet. From amongst them, 
it is mentioned that they see the Prophet whilst they are in a wakeful state that they physically saw the Prophet and they use the hadith which we have quoted previously the person will see me in a wakeful state and to um, to rebuke this belief we mention what the great scholar of, of a hadith Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani mentioned in this regard and he mentioned that يَلْزَمُ عَلَيْهِ أَنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ الصُّحَابَ وَبَقَاءُ الصُّحْبَةِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ If this was the case that indeed people who came after the demise of the Prophet if they had seen the Prophet in a wakeful state then this would also mean that they are companions of the Messenger of Allah why so? What is the definition of a Sahabi? The definition of a Sahabi is whomsoever um, sees the Prophet believes in him and dies upon Islam. So can we confirm that these people saw the Prophet according to what they what they believe? They will say yes. Do they believe in the Prophet? Yes. Did they die upon Iman? Inshallah. So that would mean that they are companions of the Prophet and no scholars have ever mentioned this and whosoever sees the Prophet of these demise in physical form is then a companion so Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani the great Muhaddith of al-Islam he mentions that this would necessitate that those people who claim to have seen the Prophet that indeed they are companions and that um, suhba attaining companionship of the Prophet will be something which will remain up until Qiyamah meaning any person who sees the Prophet in physical form of his demise it would mean that this person also becomes a companion of the Prophet and no scholars have ever mentioned this um, the author of this book um, he mentions and he says that he read in some of the books of the Sufiya um, that Abu al-Mawahib al-Shadili said he said Qala li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to me and then he narrated a hadith according to his understanding ila akhir al-hadith al-makdhub and then um, he quoted a hadith which he claims to have heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa directly and when the scholar he asked the person uh, regarding Abu al-Mawahib al-Shadili, the one who claims to have narrated from the Prophet after his demise. Um, the Shaykh asked the person, does this mean that this person is a companion? Since you heard from the Prophet, it means now, mashaAllah, that you must be a companion. And so he asked the question, is this person a companion? And he said, no. Between the Prophet and Abu al-Hasan al-Shadili, there is five there is five mashaykh, there is five other scholars. There is five other scholars. وَقَدْ رَأَى الرَّسُولِ يَقَضَةً And he saw the Prophet ﷺ in a wakeful state. And so I said to him, the Prophet Muhammad's companions did not see the Prophet ﷺ in a wakeful state after his demise. And so the person was not pleased with this response. The response which the Shaykh gave and he said that none of the Prophet companions claim to see the Prophet after his demise but yet people claim uh, to have seen the Prophet thereafter and so the Shaykh said I said to myself and he said that this is blatant lies upon the Prophet Muhammad which he warned his Ummah from in explicit terms that this person he fabricated the hadith and he said the Prophet said to me and then he narrated one of the Prophet's sayings according to him and then he mentioned that this is a hadith and so the Shaykh said to himself that this is a blatant lie which the Prophet warned his Ummah from and he said Man kathaba muta'amidan maq'adahu muttafaqun that whosoever lies against me muta'amidan on purpose he lies against me then let him take his seat in the hellfire this is a grave sin in al-islam to fabricate 
statements on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ and then to attribute it to him. This is the Prophet ﷺ. He warned his ummah from in explicit terms. Man kadaba alayya muta'amidan falyatabawwa maq'adahu min al-nar. Whosoever lies against me. On purpose, let him take his seat in the hellfire. Wallahu musta'an. And so many of the Sufiya make claims like this. That when they are in a gathering of dhikr and they mention the praise and the salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ, they mention there is a certain point wherein the Prophet ﷺ comes into the gathering. Wallahu musta'an. And they physically claim to see the Prophet ﷺ. And they use authentic narrations to prove this. However, they don't use authentic interpretation to base their false beliefs on. Wallahu musta'an. And so this hadith is very very important to understand in its correct light. Whosoever sees me in his dream will see me in a wakeful state. It means, we mentioned, it is a special type of seeing wherein the person will be close to the Prophet and he will obtain the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah azza wa jal make us from amongst them. Ameen. The next benefit we derive from these ahadith which we have quoted is that Shaykh al-Islam Zakaria al-Ansari rahimahu wa ta'ala he was asked about a man who claims to have seen the Prophet and in this person's dream the Prophet ya'muru bishay that the person he commands or he is commanded by the Prophet to do something faqala so Shaykh al-Islam Zakaria al-Ansari he said and responded to this yakrab al yahrum he said, this is something detestable. In fact, this is something which is haram. And that the ulama have mentioned that dreams is not a proof in our sharia. Right? Some people, they see certain things in their dreams, especially the Sufis, and they base their deen upon dreams. He says that the ulama have agreed upon the fact that dreams it is not an evidence in our sharia and ahkam laws is not taken from dreams so no matter how pious a person is a person can see the prophets also in a dream and the person might be informed about some aspect of the sharia and the person takes towards this he takes towards this command or he takes towards this prohibition this is not a proof in our deen. Dreams is not a proof in our deen. Our deen is based upon the Quran, the Sunnah, Ijma and Qiyas. The Adilla which is muttafaqun alay, the proofs which is agreed upon in our Sharia. It is the Quran, the Sunnah, consensus of the scholars and analogy. We do not base our, our deen upon dreams. And this does not deny the fact that dreams it is part of prophethood and dreams it is a glad tiding but we don't base our aqidah our belief we don't base our fiqh our understanding of the implementation of the laws of islam upon dreams for indeed the prophet said ru'ya al-mu'min juz'un min sittatin wa arba'ina juz'an min al the prophet said that the dream of a believer it is a part from sittatin wa arba'ina juz al min al It is part of 46 parts of prophethood. So there are 46 yani, parts of prophethood. Part of this uh, 46 parts, it is through dreams. Through dreams, it is part of prophethood. But it does not mean that we base our implementation of our Sharia upon dreams. So dreams the glad tiding, but we don't base our ahkam, our laws of Islam upon dreams. Some uh, Sufi scholars, quote unquote, they mention that they take ahkam of the Sharia directly from the Prophet Sallallahu such as Ibn Arabi. He mentioned that he takes religious teachings directly from the Prophet 
and he takes it directly from the Prophet and this goes against the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 3 where Allah Azza wa Jal says اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا a verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed the perfection and the completion of his Sharia. And this was during Hajjatul Wada. It was revealed during the final Hajj and the farewell Hajj of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. And so this verse tells us that on this day, the specific day, Hajjatul Wada, the farewell Hajj of the Prophet Akmaltu lakum dinakum. I have completed for you your religion. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, and I have perfected my favor upon you. Wa raditu lakum al Islam adinan, and I am pleased with Islam as a way of life for you. And so this perfection that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has perfected, nothing can be added to perfection, nor can anything be taken away from perfection. For Allah Azza wa Jal has completed it and he has perfected it and what kamal, what perfection and what completion can there be after the completion and the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so many Sufis claim this that they reach a certain heightened state of spirituality and they saw the Prophet ﷺ in their dream and the Prophet ﷺ now told them and gave them the glad tiding that you are exempt from the Sharia Allah musta'an that we do not longer have to pray you no longer have to fast, and certain laws of Al-Islam do not apply to you. Then you say, Wallahu musta'an, these are blatant lies against the Prophet and this is going against clear texts of the Quran and the Sunnah. And one of the greatest rebuttals against those who falsely claim to see the Prophet in a wakeful state, when they are awake of his death, it is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Mu'minun, verse 100, where Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions, وَمِن وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبَعَثُونَ Allah Azza wa Jalla says that مِن وَرَائِهِمْ and that from behind them there is a barzakh, yani hajiz, duna raj'ah. There is a barrier between them and returning to the life of this world. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبَعَثُونَ Up until the day which they are resurrected. And so this verse, it is عام, it is general, it applies to Anbiya, it applies to Salihin, and it applies to the Mu'minun and the Muslimun. It is a general verse that once you pass on, you are in a different realm of existence. And that is the Barzakh, which is a Hajj, a barrier between the life of this world and the year after. And so no person passes through this barrier, not even a prophet alayhi um, So a beautiful point of benefit with regard to this chapter and this um, is one of the final chapters which Imam At-Tirmidhi brings in his book Shama'il al-Nabi which is a comprehensive book on the characteristics of the Prophet he mentions a statement of Ibn Sirin after he narrates all of these ahadith in relation to seeing the Prophet he mentions Ibn Sirin rahimahullah ta'ala said هذا الحديث دين فانذروا عمن تأخذون دينكم he says that this hadith that you take this hadith that you seek knowledge about it is deen it is religion so look as to whom you take your religion from this is something of utmost importance to know who we take our religion from because the knowledge that we seek it is our religion so do we take from those people who claim to be masters of spirituality who, fo who, um, who follow a set methodology of spirituality which does not go back to the Prophet's own teachings in fact it blatantly goes against the teachings of the Prophet and his Sunnah as we have seen uh, from many extreme Sufis and the Sufis in general what do we take from those scholars who are known to take from the Sunnah of the Prophet in terms of the Prophet's statements and actions and they implement this and so taking 
any aspect of religion we need to look whom we take our religion from where have these people studied where have they been reared with which scholars did they sit which institution did they graduate from what books have they read we need to be certain of this because this deen and this knowledge that we seek ultimately it is our religion so we need to be very very wary who we take our religion from the next chapter which um, the author brings Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Jamil Zainu Rahimullah Ta'ala it is the chapter concerning the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and as the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam told us that whenever you face a difficulty in your life whether it be loss of life whether it be loss of wealth whether it be some form of physical ailment or you are affected with some form of deficiency in your health the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says whenever you are afflicted with a calamity then remember the greatest calamity ever to afflict you and that is the death of the Prophet when our leader and our Qa'id وسلم, passed on this is the greatest calamity to ever befall the Ummah and so um, we believe as Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam he died the death which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined and decreed for him sallallahu alayhi wasallam and there are many texts as we will see in the to prove that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi passed on and this does not take away from his status and his honor because to attribute death to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi as some people claim, it is a disrespect. But however, we base our beliefs upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned to us in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 34, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa ma jaalna li min Allah Azza wa Jal negates and he says وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not made for any bashar, any human being مِنْ قَبْلِكَ before you owe Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam al-khuld Allah azza wa jal has never made that they live for all eternity يعني that they never die Allah azza wa jal has not decreed this for any of his prophets and no any of those who are below the prophets some prophets yes lived for many years and this was the ajal this was the appointed term which Allah Azza wa Jal decreed for them to be alive but when this ajal reaches its end the person passes on and no different for our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah Azza wa Jal says أَفَإِن مِتَّ فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ and if you were to pass on O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ Would they remain on for all eternity? Will they be alive on for all eternity? No. So, the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal is that all human beings, they die. Whether they are extremely close and beloved to Him, or whether they are not, each and every single person has an appointed term. And so the Prophet them, he met his appointed term, as we will see insha'Allah. The Prophet Muhammad also confirming that the Anbiya die is a narration in Sahih Muslim wherein the Prophet said إن الله عز وجل إذا أراد رحمة أمة من عبادي قبض نبيها قبلها When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show mercy to an Ummah قبض نبيها قبلها then Allah عز وجل takes the Prophet that he sent to that Ummah he takes the life of that Ummah sorry Afwan, he takes the life of that Prophet of that Ummah while that Ummah is still Hay, while that Ummah is still alive and living فَجَعَلَهُ لَا فَرَطًا وَسَلَفًا مِنْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this Prophet a means of reward for that Ummah. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ هَلَكَةَ أُمَّةٍ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to destroy an Ummah, He does the reverse of this. عَذَّبَهَا وَنَبِيُّهَا حَيٌّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He punishes that nation while the Prophet is alive and in their midst. فَأَهْلَكَ وَهُوَ يَنْظُرُ And so Allah Azza wa Jal destroys this nation وَهُوَ يَنْظُرُ While he looks at how that nation is punished. And this happened with many of the Ummah which came before the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad when they belied and when they rejected of the clear signs and miracles were given to them. Allah Azza wa Jal then destroys that Ummah whilst that Nabi is alive and he sees this punishment before them. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, He pleases the eyes of that Prophet after being belied and calling his Ummah night and day, giving them manifest signs and clear miracles, and they still belie him. Allah Azza wa Jal um, pleases that Prophet by way of destruction of that nation which rejected him. When they rejected that Prophet. And um, they were disobedient to that Prophet's command. So here we see the Shahid, the point of reference in this hadith is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He takes the soul of His Prophets. And so this is general to all Prophets and there is no distinction between the Prophet Muhammad and previous Prophets. Inna Allah Azza wa Jal أَرَادَ رَحْمَةَ أُمَّةٍ مِنْ عِبَادِي قَبَضَ نَبِيَّهَا قَبْلَهَا Allah takes the life of that Prophet before that Ummah before that Ummah's reign ends um, The next hadith which proves to us that the Prophet passed on and this was the belief of those who were the closest to the Prophet and this is his beloved companions alayhi salatu wassalam it is the hadith wherein the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna Allah khayyara abdan bayna dunya wa bayna ma'ind Allah, fakhtar dhalik al-abd ma'ind Allah." And this is reported in Bukhari. And when Abu Bakr radiyallahu taala anhu he heard these these words from the Prophet ﷺ, he started crying because he understood what it meant. He understood what it meant. The Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a choice to a servant of his between the dunya and between that which lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاخْتَارَ ذَلِكَ الْعَبْدُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And so that servant of Allah, that abd of Allah, he chose that which was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is an amazing point. The Prophet ﷺ was referring to himself and Abu Bakr knew this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave the choice to his Prophet. And the choice which was given to his Prophet was between living in the life of this world or choosing that which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ expressed this and described this person as the third person. And he says, فَاخْتَارَ ذَلِكَ الْعَبْدُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And that servant chose that which was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet also was referring to himself فَبَكَى أَبُوْ بَكْرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْهِ and so Abu Bakr may Allah Azza wa Jal be pleased with him he started weeping because he knew that this was the Prophet also choosing the highest companion and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, another narration that mentions to us um, the death of the Prophet ﷺ is the narration of Anas ibn Malik Khadimur Rasulillah, the servant of the Messenger of Allah. And what a great description given to Anas radiallahu anhu. The servant of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He said, Akhiru Nadratan Nadartu Nadartuha ila Rasulillah Sosam Kashafa Sitara Yomarithnaifa Nadartu ila Wajihi. He says 
the last glance which I looked at the Prophet ﷺ was when the curtain was opened on Yawm al on a Monday and I looked at the face of the Prophet Mushaf, and it was as if his face looked like the page of a Mushaf because of the excellence of the Prophet face and the purity of his face so it was as if his face was a page from the Mushaf, from the Quran because of its of its يعني, beautifulness and its excellence and because of its pureness and so he says وَالنَّاسُ خَلَفَ وَالنَّاسُ خَلْفَ أَبِي بَكْرِ and people were behind Abu Bakr فَكَادَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يَطَّرِبُوا and the people were going into disarray or well, they were about to go into disarray when they heard of the death approaching of the Prophet Sallallahu and so Abu Bakr he had a calm a calm head at this time which was needed and he told the people to calm down and Abu Bakr radiallahu he led them sajf, and he closed the curtain and the Prophet وسلم, then passed on min and he passed on towards the last part of that day and this hadith it is found in Bukhari and Muslim. And so here we see that the companions of the Prophet they do not shy away from describing the death of the Prophet and they mention in explicit terms that the Prophet passed on during the latter part of that day. So this was the belief that they held that the Prophet passed on and he did not live on for all eternity as was explained to us by the noble companion Anas ibn Malik anhu. another narration which describes to us the moment of death of the Prophet it is a narration in Bukhari by one of the Prophet wives Sayyidina Aisha and, and she mentions that Qabadallahu قَبَضَهُ اللَّهُ That Allah Azza wa took the soul of the Prophet وَإِنَّ رَأْسَهُ لَبَيْنَ نَحْرَيْ وَسَحْرَيْ And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said during that time was in between my bosom that she held the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam close to her bosom and that is when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took the soul of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Another narration also on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that mentions to us and paints a picture for us of the death of the Prophet is Lama Wajeda Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Kurabi al Maut Ma Wajeda Kalat Fatimatu. That at the time when the Prophet experienced the agony and the pangs of death which not even the Prophet ﷺ was free from and he said indeed mouth has sakarat it has agonies and it has pangs and not even the Prophet ﷺ was spared from this subhanallah and at that moment when the Prophet ﷺ was experiencing this his daughter Fatima was around him and she said wa ak wa she said woe to the agony of the pains which my father experiences may the agony um, be warded away from him فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ and so the Prophet said لا كرب على أبيك بعد اليوم the Prophet gave her the glad tidings and said there will be no agony and there will be no pain upon your father after this day إِنَّهُ قَدْ حَضَرَ مِنْ أَبِيكَ مَا لَيْسَ بِتَارِكٍ مِنْهُ أَحَدٍ and the Prophet said that your father has been presented with that which no person will be bereft of and will be free from. And the Prophet was referring to Al Maut. And so the Prophet himself confirmed this that he was going to pass on. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
إنه قد حضر من أبيك ما ليس بتارك منه أحد that your father is faced with something that no person will be free from and the Prophet ﷺ referred to death that death was going to overcome him but after this agony that he felt at his moment of death it was bliss for the Prophet ﷺ it was bliss for the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam um, hadith of Ibn Abbas which describes to us um, the age of the Prophet ﷺ when he passed on and he also mentioned explicitly in this hadith the fact that the Prophet ﷺ to wuffiya that the Prophet ﷺ passed on it is a narration wherein Ibn Abbas who said مَكَّثَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ بِمَكَّةَ ثَلَاثَ أَشْرَ سَنَةٍ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ وَبِالْمَدِينَةِ عَشْرًا وَتُوُفِّيَ وَهُوَ بَنُ ثَلَاثَ سِتِّينَ The Prophet ﷺ remained in Mecca for 13 years. يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ And he received wahi in Mecca for 13 years. He became a prophet at the age of 40. And he stayed in Mecca while revelation was given to him for thalatha ashra sana, 13 years. So that would take the Prophet to 53. Wa bil madinati ashran, and the Prophet received wahi in Madina after he migrated for 10 years. Wa tuwuffiya wa huwa bnu thalathu wa sitin. And the Prophet passed on at the age of 63. So this takes the Prophet to the age of 63 after receiving prophethood at the age of 40 and he mentioned explicitly what to wuffiya wa huwa wa huwa wa huwa banu thalath wa sitin and he passed on when he was 63 years old alayhi salatu wa salam and so the companions described the prophet also and described the fact that he had passed on and there was no aib there was no frowning upon this because this is what Allah azza wa jal decreed for him alayhi salatu was salam a common narration with regards to the death of the prophet alayhi salatu was salam is a narration of Aisha radiallahu anha wherein she mentions that the prophet also matter the prophet also passed on wa abu bakr bi sunnah and at this time abu bakr radiallahu anhu he was outside of Medina Yani in an area known as Al Al Aliya, right? He was in an area on the outskirts of Medina. فقام عمر يقول, and so at this time, when the Prophet also passed on, Abu Bakr was not present, and so Umar stood up, and he said, "Wallahi ma mat Rasulillah, Subhanallah." Look at the belief of a noble companion. He was in. Um, utter dismay of the fact that the Prophet ﷺ passed on and he did not want to believe this and he said by Allah the Prophet ﷺ did not pass on and so Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came and he entered the gathering of companions فَكَشَفَ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ and he opened the face of the Prophet ﷺ فَقَبَّلَهُ and he kissed the Prophet ﷺ وَقَالَ بِأَبِي أَنْتَ تِبْتَ حَيًّا وَمَيْتًا He said by my father You are pure You are pure in your living تِبْتَ حَيًّا وَمَيْتًا And you are pure in your death صلى الله عليه وسلم And he said وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِي And he takes a qasam By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he says لَا يُذِقَنَّكَ اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَتَيْنِ He says Allah azza wa jal Will never make you experience two deaths and by this he um, was indicating to what some of the companions believed and claimed that the Prophet ﷺ would be resurrected and then he would die again close um, to the end of times and so Abu Bakr at this time restored order to the Prophet's also companions so Makharaj Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr came out and he said أيها الحالف على رسولك أو أيها الحالف على رسولك. He said, Oh you, who have been hasty with regards to your prophet, the fact that 
Umar said, Wallahi ma mat al Rasul. He said, By Allah, the Prophet did not pass on. Abu Bakr told him, O oh, Umar, to not be hasty. And then Abu Bakr, he spoke. And when Abu Bakr started speaking, Umar gathered himself and he sat down. Abu Bakr then praised Allah, wa asna alayh, and he said, Ala man kana ya'budu Muhammadan, fa inna Muhammadan qadamat, wa man kana ya'budu Allah, fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut. He said, Whosoever has worshipped Muhammad, then know that Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam has passed on. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ And whosoever has worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ Then know that Allah azza wa jal is al-hay Allah azza wa jal is the ever-living and he never ever passes on. So whoever worshipped Muhammad know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed on. And whosoever worships Allah azza wa jal then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hay la yamuti He is the ever-living and he never ever dies. And then Abu Bakr recited the following verses from Surah Al-Zumar, verse 30. إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Indeed, you will pass on. And indeed, they will pass on. As you mentioned, this is the Sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. That each and every single one of His creation has an ajal, an appointed term. And when that appointed term is reached, the person will pass on. إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ and so we mentioned that there are many a hadith on this topic that proves that the Prophet ﷺ passed on and he died والسلام, and this does not diminish the status of the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, there are many ayat which also prove this fact that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, passed on. And at that moment, Fashana Jannasu. At that moment, when Abu Bakr proclaimed this, that the Prophet indeed had passed on, Bakan Nas, yani, the companions of the Prophet they started weeping for the loss of the Messenger of Allah. Uh, Aisha, she mentions, Kana Rasulullah the Prophet used to say, وهو الصحيح يعني while he was in a healthy state إنه لم يقبض نبي حتى يرى مقعده من الجنة ثم يخير بين الدنيا والآخرة that no prophet passes on up until he is shown his place in Jannah ثم يخير بين الدنيا والآخرة at this moment of time the prophet is given a choice between the dunya and the Akhirah. Aisha ta'ala also said when the Prophet وسلم, appointed term reached him and his head was in, in her lap at the moment of his death وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, became unconscious due to the pangs of death أفاق, and then he regained consciousness فَأَشْخَصَ بَصَرَهُ إِلَى السَّقْفِ قال, and then he turned his eyesight to the roof and he said Allahumma rafiq al-a'la Allahumma rafiq al-a'la O oh Allah the highest companion O oh Allah the highest companion and she said Kultu idhan la yakhtaruna qalat araftu annahu al-hadith alladhi kana yuhadithuna bihi wa huwa sahih subhanallah and so at that moment when the Prophet looked to the roof and he said O oh Allah, the highest companion, she said, I knew at that moment that he did not choose us, but rather he chose the highest companion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then she mentioned something very important. She mentions, وَعَرَفْتُ أَنَّهُ الْحَدِيثِ أَلَّذِي كَانَ يُحَدِّثُنَا بِهِ وَهُوَ الصَّحِيحِ And she knew that this was the hadith which the Prophet ﷺ narrated to us while he was in a healthy state. The hadith which the Prophet said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take the soul of his of a prophet up until he is shown his place in Jannah. She said that she knew that this hadith was a hadith which was authentic, which the Prophet uttered. Subhanallah. And so with regard to the death of the Prophet, it is said 
that the Prophet والسلام, he died on a Monday in the 11th year of the Hijrah after the Prophet والسلام, um, after the Prophet والسلام, conveyed his message in full and he completed his mission which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had designated for him as Allah has confirmed this in his book Al Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum Watmamtu Alaikum Ni'mati Waraditu Lakum Al Islam Adina. That this day I perfected for you your religion. I've completed for you your religion and I've perfected my favor upon you and I am pleased with Islam as a way of life for you. The Prophet knew that his death was very, very close. And so after the Prophet's mission was complete, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his soul. Alayhi salatu wasalam wa huwa radin anhu and Allah Azza wa Jal was pleased with his Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam so after going through all of these ahadith and ayat on this topic there leaves no doubt um, in the mind or there should leave be no doubt in the mind of a Muslim that indeed the Prophet sallam, he passed on the death which was decreed for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this death which was decreed for him sallallahu sallam, does not diminish his status alayhi salatu wassalam that we believe firmly that the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam passed on may Allah azza wa jalla peace and blessings be upon him we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us to be close to the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam that he grants us the ability to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in our dreams and he grants us the ability to see the Prophet sallallahu in person when we will be close to him on Qiyamah and to receive his intercession and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects us in the company of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam in Jannah Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen we end up on this note inshaAllah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubilaik wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu